Hi everybody, it's Randy Baker from Composition and Visual Design. <clears throat> I just want to go through a um, quick video, it won't be that quick, it'll be about 30 minutes, on the uh, FX6 menu setup. So we're going to walk you through the entire menu setup, and if you go into the um, assignment uh, for the uh, uh, FX6 menu setup, which would be the um, uh, 1.5 FX6, FX6 status menu and main menu, um, you will see a color-coded uh, uh, breakdown of all the changes. And so, uh, again, to get into the main menu, you hit up the menu button and hold it in for two seconds, and it takes you into the main menu. And you have the 11 main tabs over here on the left-hand side. Um, and so, um, user, uh, we're going to set up a custom user menu where we're going to put the majority of the things that you're going to be using in this class in this user menu so you don't have to go through the other 10 tabs, main uh, tabs, and the 500 submenus. Uh, and then we're going to go through each of these. Shooting is um, the tab that you're going to use anytime you're shooting a new project. This is where you're going to go and set up the settings for a shoot. This would be like a daily setting thing that you would do. Project is, you know, uh, if you're going to shoot a project, Project, you would set these things up once during that project and have it set. Paint and look, this is more an advanced uh, menu system that we're not going to get into into this basic class. We kind of want you to stay out of this. Uh, you can. This is where you can really screw up the camera. Uh, and because there are 500 sub menus on this camera, if you go in and start messing around with these things and then call me and say, hey, I screwed up my camera, I don't know what I did wrong, we're just going to have you reset this back to factory preset and start this all over again because we can't walk you through the 500 submenus and try to figure out what you changed and what you didn't change. So leave this alone. Again, we're not really dealing with anything in here. You're going to have a tendency to want to go in here and change the scene file. Don't. Don't turn the scene file on even, uh, so leave it off. And then time code media, TC media. This is where your time code is set up, and we'll walk you through what time code is. You can also set up your clip name and your clip number, and you can format your media here. So you got to format your SD cards, and this is where you do that under Format Media. Uh, monitoring is just exactly that, how you're looking at stuff that's coming out of the back of the camera for output on both the SDI and the HDMI outputs on the camera. And... <clears throat> You can also go in here and change this if you're shooting anamorphic and de-squeeze the output, or you can, uh, this is also where you're going to change your, uh, uh, marker, which is your rule of thirds grid, is what we're going to be using in this class in the center marker. You'll be able to go in and change that. Audio is simply that, how you've got your audio set up in going into your camera and coming out of your camera. Thumbnail, you can see that thumbnail is grayed out here in the menu, and that is because we don't have thumbnail selected. If you went into the camera and selected thumbnail, then the thumbnail would be highlighted and you could go in there and adjust these sub menus. Technical is Basically, you know, all the things that you can change that really don't affect your project, like color bars and indie filters and your tally lights and, you know, uh, how long you want the record review to be. Uh, and this is also where you would go in and, and turn on your clear image zoom um, for your zoom. And then, of course, network is, uh, again, a little bit more advanced for this class. We're not going to really use this. Just know that if you're setting up the M and C, the monitor and control app, this is where you would go in and set up for mobile app. Yeah, and we have this set up for a um, a uh, 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 user menu. The last item in the user menu is set up for mobile app, or it's the second to the last item on this. Uh, so you'd have to go in there and set up, you know, an account, and then set up M, M and C app, and then you could use your iPhone or your iPad. Uh, as a remote monitor and control device. Maintenance is basically the language that you want. You can set your clock for 12 hours or 24 hours. It tells you how long you've, um, uh, you can reset this to a factory preset. It tells you how many hours you've been operating and it tells you what version of the firmware and the lens firmware that you have up. It should, the current firm version of the firmware is 4.0. Uh, it's okay. If you have anything 2.0 or above, you're great. Uh, the 3.0 and 4.0 firmware updates really didn't have a whole lot going on. So uh, that is the um, 11 main menu tabs. Now, two buttons over to the left of the main menu button is a button that says cancel back and get to know how to use that button if you hit cancel back it's going to take you all the way back up to the um 
user menus uh, if you're in any other user menu. It will take you back to the root 11 tabs here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the shooting menu. We're going to go into the user menu in another video and show you how to set that up for the class. But in shooting menu, you have a couple things that you're going to be changing. You're going to go in and you're going to change the base sensitivity. So uh, again, you can navigate through the through the menus three different ways. You can use the multifunction dial on the big black dial on the left side of the camera to navigate up and down. You can use the eight-way multifunction tab on the top handle of the camera right below assign button number seven eight to navigate up and down and also go left and right as well. So you can go in and out of that. And then you can use the eight-way multifunction tab on the back uh, right hand grip right below the record button back there to again go up and down and, and um and uh navigate left and right and then if you push that in you select it so that's how you do it mostly you're going to be using the big multi-function dial on the left side of the camera so we're going to go into shooting and then shooting you just hit into the sub menu and you're going to go all the way down to base um settings under project uh, i'm sorry let's go back you're going to go under shooting you're going to go base sensitivity so um and so let's uh, go all in under iso gain we're going to go into base sensitivity go down to it and you're going to change that uh, keep keep it on low we don't want to be in high in this class i want you to learn how to use this and we'll go through what base sensitivity means it's a new feature on cameras that's a new technology that has come out that basically allows you to add four more stops of light um, to the camera, ideally not adding any more noise or changing the dynamic range, but in this camera you do, so that's why we're keeping it on low. So it stays on low in this class. Um, so you're going to get into that, and then you're going to go back and you're going to go down to shutter. You're going to go back out of that, uh, and again, you could go cancel back, and you're going to go down to shutter, and you want to turn your shutter speed on. Okay, shutter speed needs to be on, and it needs to be at 148th. So you're going to dial this up to 148th and click on 148th, and you should be set. And we're going to be doing shutter speed instead of shutter angle, and you want your ECS electronic clear scan to be off as well. Mode is speed. You can go in here, you can do angle or speed. Angle is uh, the old film guys who are doing 180 degree angles or 90 degree angles or 45 degree angles. Uh, we're using an electronic shutter, so it makes more sense to use this as speed instead of um, uh, uh, angle. And now, after this class, it's a personal preference, and you can change that to anything you want. But in this class, make sure that that is uh, turned on. Um, and then uh, you're going to set that to 148th, and then you're out of that. And then we're going to go cancel back, and we're going to go down to project. And in project, you're going to change your base settings. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change the base settings uh, the record format, I'm sorry, we're not going to change the base settings. We're going to go to record format, change the record format. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to change the frequency to 23.98. If it's not at 23.98, it might be at 60 instead of 23.98. Uh, but um, we're also going to go in and we're going to change the video format to 1920 by 1080. And then when you do that, it's going to ask you to execute it and you execute it and it's going to change it from uh, 3840, uh, which is 4K, to 1920 by 1080, which is true high def. So you should be on 23.98, full frame, XAVCI, and 1920 by 1080. Um, we'll get out of that. Um, uh, you can see under frequency, which is the same thing as frame rate, you can do 23.98, which is 24 frames a second. 24, which I have on here, you would never use that. That's only if you're recording directly from the video camera to a film recorder, which you're not going to be doing. 25 is a European frame rate. 29.97 is also the same as 30 frames a second in the United States. 50, again, another European frame rate. And 59.94 is the same as 60 frames a second as well. Again, we're shooting 23.98. 98 also commonly known as 24 frames a second um if you get out of that uh and then under you're going to go down to assignable buttons so here's where we're going to change a lot of stuff okay so s and q is going to stay the same for assign button number one for assign button number two we're going to change that to iso game based sensitivity i think it's all the way up here at the top 
uh, base sensitivity ISO gain. And so that will change it just by hitting the sign button number two, change it from a low to high. A sign button number three is going to change to push auto iris. And that's down here at the bottom. Uh, push auto iris. Let's see if we can find it. Nope, I passed by it. Push auto iris. Uh, let's go all the way up here. Push auto iris. Push auto iris. There we go. And that's going to be three. Assign button number four. We're going to change from focus magnifier X3 by X6 to focus magnifier X6 only. That's a 600% digital zoom. Assign button number five stays the same as the direct menu. Assign button number six, which is off, we're going to change to touch operation. Uh, again, I believe that's all the way down here at the bottom. Uh, did we go by that? Um, Touch operation. There we go. And that just, uh, that's on the inside of your right hand grip. And that turns on and off the touch sensitivity of the monitor LCD. Number seven, we're going to change to record review. Um, and let's see if it's in here. Record review. There you go. And number eight, we're going to change to marker. Uh, and so let's go down and find marker. There we go, marker. And number nine is going to stay at video signal monitor. And then we're going to go to the focus hold button, and we want focus hold on. Um, and you're going to go to uh, get hit, cancel back and get out of that. You're going to go to the assignable dial, and you're going to change it from iris to um, opposite, uh, and then iris for the handle dial and also opposite. So you want to change both of those to opposite there. Um, and then you're going to go down to the multifunction dial, and this needs to be on iris as well. So that is about it for uh, shooting. Um, and now we're going to get out of that, and we're going to go back to the <clears throat> cancel back and go back to time code media. Again, we're not changing anything in paint look at all. In time code media, the first thing you're going to do is go into time code and you're going to change the run from record run to free run. And then you're going to go back out of that and you're going to hit reset on that. Um, well, I'm sorry, setting. And then you're going to go in there and change that to the time of day. And right now it is 1031. So this is hours. Uh, minutes, seconds, and frames. So just dial that in. 10, 31, and it, you you have to be aware of uh, AM and PM, 31, 0, 0, 0, 0, there, and then set. Uh, and that's going to change it to 10, 31. And then we're going to go back out of that. Um, and uh, you're going to go to... Um, uh, the monitoring tab. Let's go back out of that and we're going to go down one to the monitoring tab and we're going to go in and we're going to change our output uh, on and off. I already have that changed to on so I can see it in my monitor here. And so that is usually off for SDI and HDMI and you're going to turn both of those on. Um, and then you're going to go down to marker and under marker, you're going to turn on a couple things. First of all, you're going to make sure the setting is on. I, I like mine on red. You can change this to any color you want. Uh, and, and I want to turn my center marker on, and I want a center marker number three. You can see one is too big, two is too big, three is just right, four has the hole in the middle, and uh, you're off. We're going to do number three on this. Safety zone is off. Aspect ratio is off. Um, aspect safety zone is off. Uh, and uh, the guide frame is on. This is what Sony calls the rule of thirds, and you can see that turned on when we went through that. So that's it for a marker, and we're going to get out of that, and we're going to go into peaking here. And on peaking, we're going to go make sure that it's on peaking. And again, this is going to be, a, this is a set for an assign button on the left side of the LCD on, but mid level. If you have it on high, it'll give you a false indicator that you're in focus when you're not. And if you have it on low, you'll have a hard time seeing it. And then the color, uh, change this to red. We want you to change this to red because it's easy for us to see whether or not you have it on. And then you want to go into zebra and you're going to keep your zebra one level at 70 IRE and you're going to have a 10% aperture. So that means when you see zebra one and have that turned on 
in your viewfinder, you're going to see zebra stripes between 65 IRE and 75 IRE. So 70% with the 10% aperture, 5% on either side. Zebra 2 level, you have to change to 90. And this is where at 90 IRE in uh, S Cinetone, um, um, which is the gamma that we're shooting in, this is where you start losing detail and overexposing your whites. So that's why we have it set there. There is no aperture for Zebra 2. So anytime you see Zebra 2 stripes, uh, th that means that it's above 90. So really easy to kind of tell that way. Um, and then we're out of this and we're going to go into the audio tab. And again, in the audio tab, what we're going to do is we're going to go into input and we're going to set up our input to input one for it. Channel one input select input one on the left side of the camera. I'm sorry, on the right side of the camera, uh, the XLR input. And we're going to go to input two and we're going to set up input one as well. Now, if you look at this and we see this, you see there are three settings input one internal mic and shoe channel one. The internal mic is <clears throat> on the very front of your top handle it's that metal grid right in front of that black little tab that's there and if you pull that black tab out there's a hot shoe an electronic uh, connector shoe underneath there called the uh, multi interface shoe and that's why it's called shoe channel one uh, so we're gonna again we're gonna select channel one input one and then if you go to input two now you know there's four inputs input one input two internal mic and shoe mic channel two so you uh, sony makes an adapter and a, a wireless mic two channel wireless mic that you can plug into this uh, hot shoe on the top of the camera and not have any wires or batteries going to the microphone and get two channels of audio in there again we're going to have this on input one so channel one input select is on input one channel two input select is on input one and then channel three and channel four are on internal mics and then you're going to get out of that and you're going to go down to audio output and you're going to go into uh, volume and you're going to crank this all the way up this is your headphone volume and and so you you really want to crank this up all the way and then <clears throat> i'm sorry this is the volume coming into your camera um and uh the headphone and and uh, i'm sorry the headphone monitor and then this is uh your headphone out whether you want it stereo or mono we want it on mono this is the our alarm level for your um end of tape uh, uh, telling you you're running out of the space on your disc or your batteries um going low so we're going to keep that on four that's the lowest setting by the way and so that's the audio output we're going to go back out of the audio main tab and go back into the technical one and again here uh you can see you got nd filters uh clear with dial on that just tells you that there's an orange light when you have no nd filter dialed on on tally this is purely subjective up to you but i usually turn my front tally off because sometimes I don't like people knowing that I'm recording them they can see my front tally light but I keep my rear on so I can see that uh, I am recording I'm gonna go out of that uh, hold switch settings those should be on um, and normal touch operation we have that turned on but again we've assigned that to assign button number six record review uh it, it, we want you to set this to clip and so normally we'd have you set this to three seconds this is if you hit assign button number seven is going to play back the last clip or the last three seconds or the last 10 seconds or the entire clip of the last clip that you recorded we have it set for clip because if you hit assign button number seven it starts playing the clip and you've seen all you need to see you can just hit assign button number seven again and it will automatically stop it so it's it's much better and much more flexible to leave this on clip instead of three or ten seconds um this is zoom we're going to go into zoom and we're going to keep this on optical zoom only and when you start doing your white cards you might want to go in and learn how to use on clear image zoom which puts a 2x digital zoom in the viewfinder um handle zoom again you don't have to worry about any of this menu settings uh, you this will allow you to turn off all the uh 10 tabs and just use the user menu you're not going to do that you don't have to change anything on the menu page you shouldn't touch the fan control and you're going to go down to lens and there's two things here you're going to change so make sure you change these these are probably the most uh missed ones that we see under distance display you're going to go from feet to meters so this is your focus distance display in the upper left hand corner of the camera when you adjust your focus ring you want to see that number in feet not an m behind it and then zoom position display this is number which is z numbers so if you see a z next to where your focal length is supposed to be that means you still got this set to number you need to have this on focal length 
uh, which will show you a millimeter number, which is how 99.9% .9 of the rest of the world really looks at um, uh, f uh, focal length. And the Z numbers are Sony's proprietary focal length system that only applies to um, uh, so a specific number of Sony cameras. And that's it. And then we're going to go all the way back down to technical uh, and we'll go through maintenance. Language is English. Clock set. You can set this to 12 hours or 24 hours. I'm going to set it to 12 hours uh, because I don't like 24 hours. And then year, year, month, month, day, day. I'm going to set the date here and I'm going to go uh, month, day, year. We're all the only country in the United States that has that and everything else is set up properly here um all reset resets everything to factory preset this tells you how many hours you had on the camera and this tells you what version of the firmware you have and that is it my friends that's how you set up the uh, menu and when you get out of this now and you look at your main menu here's what you should see your main viewfinder here manual focus and this is your focus number should be in feet and it goes from 1.2 feet to infinity this is your focal length. It goes from 24 millimeters all the way to 105 millimeters on the long end. This is your steady shot on the left side of the lens, on the back um, part of the lens. There are two switches, one that says AF, MF, that needs to be on AF, and another one that says uh, uh, optical steady shot, and that needs to be off. If it's on, it will say STD. Just turn that off on this. Uh, this is your um, uh, telling me that I got a, a card in slot B, and I got 81 minutes left on it. This is your white balance indicator, and this is determined by the AB preset white balance mode switch on the left side of the camera. Uh, we want to keep this on um, uh, white balance and uh, on preset. And so then if you hit the white balance button on the left side of the camera once, that puts a white box around this. And then you know, I would go ahead and just dial that into 5600 degrees Kelvin by using the multifunction dial on the left side of the camera or the two way with multifunction tabs and then push that in and it will go away and set that for 5600 degrees Kelvin. As you can see, our time code is the time of day. We got that set for 1040 um, right now. And then this is our iris F8 that go, will go from F4 to F22 on this. This is our gain set up for low zero DB. This is our um, shutter speed. Uh, this is the camera level indicator telling us that we're straight. This is our audio level. We are missing our waveform monitor. We're missing a couple things here. Waveform monitor is assigned button number nine on the left side of the viewfinder. So if you look on the outside of the viewfinder on the left side, there's three buttons. Uh, peaking, zebra, and nine. Nine is that. And so you press it once and it brings up the waveform monitor. You press it again, it gives you a vector scope. You press it again and it gives you a histogram. You press it again and it's off. You have to have this on. It will get kicked back to you in week one if you don't have that turned on. This is your base sensitivity. Again, we assign that to assign button number two on the left side of the camera. That changes that from low to high. This is your gamma. It should say S tone. We shouldn't see a scene file dialed in. Except XAVCI is your um, uh, codec, uh, XAVC Intra, 23.98 uh, is your frame rate, 1920 by 1080 high def. This is telling me that I'm plugged into AC power. Anytime you're shooting inside, you should be plugged into AC power. Um, and this is telling us that you were in a full frame mode. This is a full frame camera, but you can crop the sensor to go to the super 35 millimeter mode. This is, tell this is the rule of thirds grid, the center marker, and this is your clip name and clip number, which we missed. So to change that, uh, you're going to go back in and it's under, uh, let's see where it's at. This is, this is a good one. Again, you press the button menu button. Once it gets you in the status menu, you press and hold it and it gets you into the main menu. And so, um, uh, let's see, uh, it's, uh, not there. Refinder settings, paint look project. Uh, it would probably be shooting. Let's go into shooting and see if we can find. Um, nope, not under shooting. Uh, sign dial, multifunction dial, user file. Nope. Uh, paint look. Nope. Time go clip. No, there we forgot it. Clip name number. So you're going to go in here and you're going to go to title prefix and you're going to put your first name in. Now, this is a little tricky and you might want to use the top or the back. Uh, hand grip uh, multifunction dial to do this to navigate through this so you just go through and you could type your first name your nickname your last name whatever you want in here 
Um, and so let me go back down here and go back to backspace and get rid of these numbers that are in here already. So get rid of the numbers just by hitting backspace and then you can go in and put anything you want in. Uh, my production company is called RBBBP. Um, so I'm going to put that in RBP and uh, there we go. And I've got some craziness going on there. So let me go back. Uh, oh, um, I'm going to select that and I'm going to go down and go backspace again. Uh, there we go. So you can see it's a little funky to, to, get, to navigate around with using the uh, multifunction dials will definitely help. Um, but when you get it done, uh, then you go all the way down here and hit done and you're there and you go down to your number prefix. Every time you start a new job, you set this to, um, to one. Um, so uh, that way when you hand this off, in post, you know exactly how many shots you've shot. Okay, so now when we get back out of this, now you'll see that we have RBP001. So this is all 24 elements. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, uh, 21, 22, 23, 24. So all 24 elements are set up properly, and that's what you need to be able to do. Uh, if you have any questions or need any help, there's a comprehensive guide. There's a color-coded PDF. There's in the assignment itself, there's a, a rundown of all the things with this listed as well. So we give you multiple different ways to learn this. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Um, you know, just pick one and then make sure that you go through and um, have all the settings set up correctly.